Cattle graze on thigh-high grass at the G-Bar C Ranch in northern Texas. This is where Meredith Ellis grew up. Now she's raising her four-year-old son here. Everything I do, I think about him now, and, and I think about his future, and what is this world going to look like when he's my age? Ellis worries about the droughts, floods, and other calamities he may face from climate change. That's a big reason why she raises her cows a bit differently than most. Her fields look like meadows, where others look like lawns. Jeff Goodwin with the Noble Research Institute says it matters because grass takes carbon dioxide from the air and sends it to the roots. The more forage production that we're getting, the deeper the root systems, the more carbon we're sequestering out of the, out of the atmosphere. This is the starting point, and on the other side of that fence is the, the end point. So can you, you can tell a stark difference between these weeds and those golden native grasses over there. If allowed to rest and reseed, Ellis says overgrazed land like this can start to recover in a year or two. Worldwide, an area the size of Mexico is overgrazed, by one estimate. Goodwin and the Noble Research Institute are working to change that. They're developing a marketplace that rewards ranchers like Ellis, who are working to restore the land, capture carbon, and more. I don't think carbon's the answer. Uh, it's, it's not the only answer. If we build a carbon market, I don't think we'll be as successful as if we build an ecosystem service market. That's because a healthy ranch ecosystem does more than just store carbon. Rainfall starts up on the prairie and percolates all the way down through those roots and finally empties into this creek. So by the time it gets here, it's crystal clear. It's like we have a giant Brita filter is, is what this is. That means cleaner drinking water for people downstream. That's worth money, and that's just the start. We have the intentions on building a strategy and a framework to be able to tag on biodiversity or other ecosystem services that our producers are providing today. They're just not being compensated for. So this is an endangered orchid. Ellis says the money may encourage more ranchers to do what she does, but that's not why she does it. Like, how do you quantify that, you know? Um, how do you quantify the monarch butterflies that need to rest here? You know, how, how important to humanity and our planet is that? And I think it's, it's extremely important and not something to overlook. Some major food and beverage companies are interested in the market. By 2022, Noble hopes to be rewarding ranchers for doing the right thing. Steve Barragona, VOA News, Cook County, Texas.